Welcome back to part five of creating this interactive grass. Okay, where we're at so far is that we have our grass reacting to when the sphere is moving around, but we want to restrict how much grass gets trampled based on its distance from the sphere. So we only want trampled grass around this kind of area here. Obviously, this grass over here should not be affected. So let's go back into our shader. Now, keep it playing so that we can test this as we go along. So back into our grass shader, we need to work out how far away we are from the grass or the grass needs to know how far away it is from the center of the ball. Now, we're already getting our vector to the vertices in this subtract here. So by working out how long it is, will tell us the distance away that it is. Okay, so we can come up here. Now what I'm gonna do with this out, I'm just gonna leave it going to this split just for now, but I also wanna bring it up to another node which finds out the length of a vector that you send in there. Right, so this is gonna get the length. Then what we're gonna do with the length is determine whether it's within a certain size, which is our trample size that we're bringing in here. So the length of the vector is the distance from the point to the vertex. Okay, so we need to do a comparison. We're gonna come out here and do a comparison node. So this is like a logic statement and if then else statement type thing. Comparison with trample size, let's bring that into there. Now, um, we're gonna say is if the length is less than the trample size, then our vertex is close enough to trample. So we go less or equal. Now, if that's the case, we're going to branch that. And the branch is basically our logic of what we're going to do with those values. So if we are within a certain radius of the sphere, then we're going to have a true value over here from this comparison. So if it's true, what do we want? What value do we want to put out? Well, we want to put out our trample strength. So let's put that over here and feed that in for our true. Now, if we don't, then we're going to output zero. We don't want any strength whatsoever involved in the uh, calculation. Okay, so let's now bring that down and combine it back in. Basically, you want to use this trample strength to come back and affect this vector that is being fed through to the split. Remember, this is the vector that is coming through and affecting the offset of our vertices. But we either want it to be of trample strength or of a value of zero. Okay, so we'll just move over here a little bit. Let's move this code up, or these nodes, I should say, not code. And then what we're going to do is bring the value out of here and do a multiply. Put that as the A value, it doesn't matter if it's the A or B value. Now what's this going to be multiplied with before it comes and goes into the split? So this is going to come down into here. If we use the vector coming out of here, well depending on how far away the grass is or the vertices are from the actual sphere, the vector will be all different sorts of lengths, okay? You want to make sure that you're applying the same value each time, which means we want to normalize that vector so it's a length of one, and then we can multiply it by the strength. So we're going to bring this value out of here, and we're going to put in a normalize up here. Then that normalize is going to go into our multiply, which will come down into here. Now, one more thing that we want to do before we actually even normalize. The value that's coming out of here is going to be an x, y, z value. Okay, we're really not interested in the y component of that vector. We just want to know which way we want to push out in the x and the z directions and forget about the y. So we could split it, get rid of the y, and then put back in a combine. Now we've done that before where we've split things to get rid of stuff and combine it. Another way you can get rid of a complete dimension such as the y in this case is just multiply it with a value of y that's zero. So what I'm going to do is bring this out to here and we'll multiply it. So we'll bring this value in, bring this normalized down here and then we're going to multiply, we want to keep the x value of one, 
the Z value multiplied by one, and then we just want to zero off that Y value. So we're not interested in the Y component. And then we feed through that into the normalize there. That is then going to give us the strength of what we're going to apply, which is going to come down via here. Okay, so with that done, save it. And we're going to come into the scene and have a look at the effect that that's going to give us. Now, currently, let's set that material. The trample strength and the trample size is zero. So there's not going to be any effect at all. We want to maybe say two and two in this particular case. And bam, suddenly you can see that that's actually working. And now you can move the ball around and the trample will happen. But if the ball stays still, Notice that that sway is still in the grass, which looks nice. Okay, you still want that grass swaying, but you might also want to turn it off so it doesn't actually sway back in to that ball or even possibly dampen down that. We can, just for easiness sake at this point, just turn that swaying off. So let's just pop back into our grass shader what we can do is determine is if we are being offset by being trampled, then we don't want to sway. We're already determining that with this comparison as to whether we need to be trampled or not. So we can use this comparison in place. Let me just see if I can zoom out just a little tiny bit. Okay, of this ad, because this ad is where the trampling and then the uh, swaying gets added together. So instead of adding it, you might want to remove that ad. And instead of that, what we're going to do is use this comparison here to test and then branch out again. So we're going to branch. And in fact, we'll take that value that's coming out of here. And we will branch and put that into the true of the branch. Okay, because if it's true, again, then we do want to squash it. If it's false, then we don't want to squash it. We actually want to hook this one up to here. So it's swaying. And then this same logic comparison that's going on up here will come down into the branch to test whether we are going to sway or be trampled just there. Okay, so with that done, let's save it. And we'll switch back into our scene and have a look at the result. Now, immediately, we're not getting any offset here whatsoever, but that's because over in the inspector, the trample strength and the trample size for the grass material hasn't been set. So you might want to set the size, which is your radius around the grass. So you can see there, as soon as you set that without the trample strength, this grass just stops swaying because there's no sway left into it. Now you might want to reduce that down to one and it's going to depend on the size of the object that you're trying to um, trample the grass with. And then the strength you can increase, we'll put that up to one, you'll get a little bit of band in it. Let's just bring it out a little bit more. And it's just a matter of marrying up those sizes to make sure you get the sort of effect that you're after and you're not overlapping too much with that sphere. Okay, because otherwise you're going to get blades of grass going through there, which we kind of are anyway, but we've eliminated an awful lot of them for the cost of the algorithm that we've written. Some of this swaying is still coming in to that ball as you can see there um, so you can of course adjust that but now if we move this around just look at how nicely that grass is kind of getting out of the road okay so this has basically been a very simple introduction to interacting with something that's created with the shader and passing through values from a script into a shader. And we're using very simple mathematics just to offset the vertices of the trampled grass. But you could go to town if you want to add curves and get a lot more accurate in there as well. But I hope this is giving you some inspiration of other things that you could also um, create a shader with because it's going to be a lot faster to process it on the GPU with a shader than actually calculating it 
vertex by vertex using um, the CPU in Unity uh, because the GPU is doing it in parallel. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial on interactive grass. I've really enjoyed putting it together and I will see you again uh, in my next YouTube tutorial. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.